This is Heart Rhythm TV. I'm Janet Hahn, and we're coming to you live from the floor in Boston at HRS 2021. And I want to introduce you to my friend, very good friend, uh, Dr. Jennifer Silva, who is a professor of pediatrics as well as biomedical engineering, faculty fellow of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. and director of pediatric EP. So a whole lot of titles, but I think my favorite title is that she is my buddy and we've known each other for a long time and I haven't seen you in a thousand years. So, I know, it's been so yeah. lovely to see you. Yeah, it's awesome to be back in person, but we're gonna jump right in. Uh, a little bit about digital innovations, which is the theme mm -hmm. of our program. And um, Jennifer's a superstar in this area. And so I want to ask her to sort of define a little bit some of the alphabet soup that surrounds this. So I want you to talk a little bit about what is AI, what is AR, what is VR and what is mixed reality? Sure, so you know it's really important to have your definitions right yeah. before you dive in because otherwise it becomes very confusing very quickly. So I would start by immediately separating these topics mm -hmm. out. I would start with what we call the extended realities. So that's gonna be virtual, VR, augmented, AR, and mixed or MR, mixed realities. And then we'll put AI in a separate bucket. And we're gonna get back to that in a second. When we talk about the extended realities, we talk about tools that help you see things in a different way. They may be immersive, like virtual reality. They may allow you to remain in your natural environment, like augmented reality. They may allow you to remain in your natural environment and manipulate objects, like okay. mixed reality. So those are the subtle differences between those three. Although I will say, you could ask different users and probably get slightly different answers. What's AI? I mean, AI to me is this mysterious bucket that includes all sorts of things that computers can do that humans can do, but potentially do it better. Okay. So what are the things that I think of when I think of AI? I think of machine learning, neural networks. Right. My personal favorite, natural language processing. I don't think people really think about natural language processing with AI, but it really is a brilliant form of AI. Um, these things naturally intersect and they overlap, right. but it's really important to understand where they come from at their core and then understand the ways that they can come together. No, I think that makes sense. Now, I know that you had a grant or have a grant with a NIH and a lot of your work, besides sort of understanding all of this alphabet mm -hmm. soup, is really within sort of the AR mixed reality uh, sort of area. So I wanted you to talk to me a little bit about why mixed reality and how you think that might impact EP or how does it impact EP? That's a great question. So I, I've always been a technophile. I think yeah. most electrophysiologists by nature are. Yeah, we are innovators, right? We really yeah. are. And, and I think that over my career, I've had the opportunity to watch several technologies sort of emerge onto the market. or not even quite the market yet, just sort of emerge. Sure. technically speaking. And what I like to do is I find problems. Just generally, I see needs. Okay. And I like matching technologies and needs. That's always been something that I've enjoyed. It's always been a way that I think of things. And so the more experience that I got as an ablator, and I mm -hmm. still do cases you know, twice a week, and I thoroughly enjoy doing my cases, but I was able to really pick out not just these are things that I'm deficient at, but these are things that our technology is deficient at. And once you've identified that, then you can look around and see, well, what's out there that can help me meet those needs, and then how can I creatively develop to address those needs? Okay, right, so then in, within EP itself, are you using mixed reality to actually manipulate, like you said, things in our real world that sort of are augmented, or, or are you actually doing something else with that? So what we've done to date is we've yeah. been able to import the electroanatomic maps that okay, we use nice. from our 3D mapping systems and display those maps with the real-time catheter locations. Okay. So that's where we started, okay. right? But you can clearly see that's just step one sure. in a multi-step process right. of how can we give the electrophysiologists in the lab more control over the data they need to make smart decisions, interprocedural decisions, 
that are going to do better for the patient. Right. right? Absolutely. And that's the goal. The goal of improving patient outcomes in the end Always. with this. Right. Always. Exactly. So I'm going to change gears for a second and have you put your entrepreneur hat on. <laughs> and I want you to give me your top sort of advice for anyone in the EP space who might be a budding entrepreneur, but then I want you to also put a spin on it and then tell me what is that like for a woman? Great questions. So I think you have to be relentlessly curious, yeah. right? You should never stop asking that why question. And as soon as people start coming back with, because that's how we've done it, that's an area to probe, right? That should always yeah, be an absolutely. area to probe. The other thing I think that you have to do is build your network. And I know that sounds a little strange, but I can't do all the things that I want to do, but I work with really smart engineers. I work with really smart entrepreneurs. I have this great team of people immediately around me and then sort of you know, in, in circular fashion mm -hmm. out for me, that ripple effect, that help me bring my creative visions to fruition. Absolutely. That, that goes with the theme of HRS, which is this yes. sort of team concept, right? Yeah. It absolutely does. And hopefully will be a theme for HRX in right. December. Exactly. That's going to be an exciting conference for yes. sure. And so how does that change for a woman in entrepreneurship? Certainly harder being yeah. a woman in entrepreneurship. I mean, the data are quite clear on this. Mm -hmm. While female founded companies are growing exponentially, mm -hmm. the number of venture dollars that go to support those companies is still well sub 10%, you know, closer to two to 3%. Mm -hmm. And so we, we have this gap. And sure. just as we have gaps in so many different aspects, this is a gap that we need to close and we need to do this by having successful females. Yeah, absolutely, that is one thing we really still need to work on. So Correct. I want to thank you for sitting down with me for this thank you. very quick interview. And thank you all for joining us here at HRS 2021 live in Boston and hopefully virtually from all over the globe. Thanks again. Thank you.